Today, guys, we're diving into the wonderful world of macro photography, specifically ultra macro photography. And we're talking about two and a half to five times magnification. Insane, very extreme macro photography here today and video, of course. And to do that, we're going to be looking at the Laowa 25 millimeter F 2.8, 2.5 to five times magnification. So this is not for beginners. I wanted to get that right out of the way. This is definitely the, one of the coolest, one of the funnest lenses that is out there in my opinion. I've owned this thing for quite some time and I have to say it's not for beginners. You've been warned. If you think you're gonna buy this lens, jump into macro photography for the first time and get some great results on day one, unfortunately, you're gonna be sadly mistaken. So it does have quite a steep learning curve, but man, is this a cool lens. So I thought we'd just go through and just share my experience with it and show you the use case and just how to operate this thing rather than getting into all of the technicals and whatnot. It is one of the coolest and the most fun lenses that I own, I have to say. And if you are a subscriber, you know that I love macro photography. This thing just takes it to the next level. And to, to prove that to you, right here in my hand, if you can see it, it is a tiny, tiny, tiny piece of pepper. This is a little ball of pepper here. And the cool thing about macro is that it takes random everyday objects and just makes them interesting, pretty much anything. So this is what that little piece of pepper looks like at two and a half times magnification. Pretty cool. And here it is at a higher magnification going up. And as you can see, the depth of field that we're dealing with here is insanely shallow, fractions of an inch. So needless to say, this lens is incredibly tedious, frustrating, difficult, and extremely rewarding to use. So first let's talk about the build of this thing and have a look physically. Now it is kind of built like a tank. It's got a metal construction and it does extend as you change the magnification. This is a completely manual lens. So there's no autofocus. In fact, there's no connection to the camera whatsoever. So it doesn't know what aperture you're using. That's completely set on the lens itself. It doesn't know anything. As you extend the lens here, the magnification does increase and it does have some new Nifty magnification ratios on there to see exactly what you're dealing with. Next, we've got an aperture ring at the top here, and that's gonna allow us to go from F2.8 to F16, and it's got nice hard stops, feels pretty good. And overall, the lens construction is quite good. On the back, there's a metal mount with no rubber gasket for weather ceiling protection. And on the front, you'll probably see the smallest little front element that you've ever seen, but don't let it surprise you, it is actually quite sharp. So that tiny little piece of glass there is going to help us get really nice and close to our subjects without spooking them. And that is one of the cool things about this lens compared to some of its comparables, uh, which there are not many. This thing is really thin and really small for what it is, as you can see here. Now the overall size again does extend as you change your magnification and with that it's going to change its fixed working distance. So that's another thing to consider. This is not a lens that you can shoot out to infinity. This does have a fixed working distance of about 23 centimeters and when you're all the way out to five times magnification that's going to be reduced. So overall the build is quite good. It feels substantial and to zoom that magnification it is very very stiff but overall it feels good. There's really not much to it. That's it. No button or switches like I said no weather sealing that's uh, that's what you get so here are some of my favorite shots some are handheld some are on a tripod and some are focus stacked so all these shots that you see here were taken handheld with a basic flash setup, which I'll show you in a second. If you are planning to be on the move and want to capture things like bugs and critters and all that fun stuff, a flash setup is going to be absolutely essential. In fact, you won't be handholding without one unless you plan on pumping up that ISO to unreasonable amounts. Here's my basic setup, which includes a flash and just some type of basic diffuser. And here I am out there shooting with it. I will link all my gear down in the description for you to have a look. And here's a few more handheld shots. It's worth noting about this lens that it's designed to shoot things that are smaller than one centimeter. So if the things you shoot are typically bigger than that, I would stick to a lens that's more of a one to one magnification ratio. And if you're newer, maybe a macro lens with autofocus capabilities. Here's an example of some photos shot using a tripod where you have much more control of your shutter speed. And this is gonna be better for subjects that are not moving. Using a tripod, you can get away with not using a flash and you have a lot more control when fine tuning your continuous lighting. 
And here's a few examples of some focus stacked images. This is where editing expertise is really gonna come in because it is quite in depth, although you can learn relatively quick. And if you did wanna brush up or learn more about macro photography, check out the link to my free in-depth macro masterclass. And again, because the depth of field is so shallow, focus stacking is going to be your best friend. And that's where it's worth noting that there are a few things that you should really consider before buying this lens. One, hopefully you're not a brand new photographer and you have some knowledge and understanding of photography and the settings that you need to use. Two is going to be that you have power to edit these photos, some kind of editing software. I recommend Photoshop or Lightroom or both. And there's definitely some accessories and equipment that I would recommend that is absolutely key and necessary if you're gonna be using this lens well. Now, of course, you're gonna need the lens and a camera, but you're also gonna need a sturdy tripod. A tripod is going to be essential and give you some really great shots. It's also gonna allow you to focus stack, and to do that, we use something like a macro rail so that you can adjust your focus moving forward and backwards ever so slightly, taking several photos and then stitching them all together for an awesome result. Like I said, if you think you're gonna pick this thing up with absolutely no experience and no gear to help you out, you're not gonna get great results. So in terms of the image quality that you get out of this lens, it can be very sharp, but again, we're working with very, very shallow depths of field. Now with macro lenses using extreme magnification, you are dealing with diffraction. So unfortunately, if you go past about F8 or dare to go past F11, your image quality is gonna suffer greatly. And here's a look at the difference in aperture at five times magnification. Unfortunately, as you increase the magnification past about three and a half times, you are gonna start to notice some increasing softness. So as you can see here at five times magnification, even at f2.8, f4, f5.6, it's definitely not even as close to as sharp as it is at two and a half. So just something to be aware of when shooting with this lens. And that means that embracing the tedious process of focus stacking is gonna be your best friend. Also with macro, the more you stop down, the more that dreaded sensor dust is going to be all over your photos. So there's going to be a lot of retouching. Make sure everything's clean. That's a tip for you. There are some things that are completely unavoidable with this type of photography. So for great results, I'd recommend you definitely use a flash with this lens. You're gonna need an incredible amount of light, especially at those higher magnifications. Stopping down, your effective aperture is gonna be around f40 so you're going to need a ton of light to get the proper exposure that you're looking for so either an on-camera or off-camera flash setup is going to work fantastic for you now with lighting the sky's the limit you can use constant light you can use a flash you can use specialized lighting you can use the sun and a longer exposure setup on a tripod it's totally up to you but you are going to need a lot of light now at around 399 us dollars brand new i think this lens is a steal and i don't regret my purchase one bit it's awesome to be able to channel your inner bug hunter once again, and it's great to be able to get out and just shoot things in nature that you'd never be able to see if you didn't have this lens. Definitely one of the most fun and unique lenses that I own. And there's my thoughts on the awesome Laowa 25mm f2.8, 2.5 to 5 times magnification, a crazy fun and very tedious and rewarding lens like you saw. Guys, if you did want to pick this up, I will drop affiliate links for you down in the description. It's available for a ton of different mounts, not just the Sony that I shoot on. So if you shoot Canon or Nikon or something like that, you may be in luck. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, join the community, and like always, make mistakes, be yourself and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.